Hey friends, the Dragon School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman playing solo this week, talking about the things you might see in church this week. Uh, if you're going to church, you might hear about, well, uh, an unforgiving servant. Uh, you might hear the parable uh, found in Matthew chapter 18 about forgiving our neighbor, our brother who sins against us. Uh, this is where Jesus would say, um, I, I don't say forgive a, a neighbor, a brother, seven times, but 77 times, and immediately we start counting because we're like, all right, that's a lot of times, but 78, peace. Um, so Jesus tells us a parable. He says that the kingdom of heaven would be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants, and when he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed to him 10,000 talents, and since he could not pay his master, order him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So a servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience on me, and I will pay you. But he refused. And he went and put him in prison until he should pay his debt. Um, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth over this one, you can already tell. Um, but the issue at hand isn't just that um, we have to continue to forgive as we have been forgiven. Like, it, it, you were given this, so, you know, pay it forward like the lady at Starbucks who bought your uh, who, who bought your iced coffee, so clearly you have to pay for everybody's uh, food and drink and cake pops and all this other stuff. It feels like a lot more when it has to come from you, but that's the point of the parable. It doesn't see forgiveness when it when it comes from our hearts there's a there's a finite amount of forgiveness that i got there and it's for a finite number of people it's for the people whose uh well excuses i'm willing to hear who whose um who, whose relationships are valuable to me enough that i'm willing to overlook or or even forgive a number of times uh until 77 moving into 78 if forgiveness comes from the heart, there's a limit to it. But forgiveness doesn't come from the heart. Forgiveness only comes from one place. Forgiveness comes from the merciful king. It comes from the cross. Forgiveness is paid for one purchased given there. Jesus forgives you all your sins, all of them. And so when you are asked to forgive your neighbor his one sin, it's not just like, look how much more you got out of it than this one sin, so you know, pay it forward. But rather, it's look to the very same source of forgiveness for your neighbor as you would look to for yourself. See, um, here's the thing. If you want to track debts, you're going to be counting everything all the time. The master just wipes the slate clean. He says, don't count at all. Nothing's worth counting anymore. It's all been paid for. It's all been erased. And because it's all been erased, that means that you have a, take, a place to take the debts. You don't just have to harbor them and just sort of grin and bear it because after all you were forgiven more, but rather you get to take your, your neighbor's sins against you to the very same cross. It's, it's wonderful to find, well, a Jesus who's willing to forgive my neighbor every bit as much as he's willing to forgive me because now I have a place to take the places where I have been harmed, where I have been wronged, where I am owed a debt, and, and I get to actually look and say, this is not right, fix it. And I get to see a place where justice is paid upon sinners. Jesus bleeds. Uh, and, and it's not arbitrary. It, it's actually a place where you can see all of the anger, all of the frustration, all the, the hurt that you have that you just need to see placed in time and space so that somebody would pay what they owe. It's placed in time and space. And Jesus says it's finished now. All forgiveness comes from the cross. Even just starting with the idea that your sins hurt me a lot, but Jesus died for you. That debt has been paid. That's a place to start to address my own shortcomings in my own heart because even that the master forgives uh the wonderful piece about this parable is that when we talk about debts um we get to talk about the place where they were paid it, it, it's not a burden it's not an obligation to forgive more but but rather it's it's a source of unending forgiveness so that when you are coming up short with forgiveness you have a place to go to to, to hear more you get to go to church to hear that Jesus not only forgives all of your sins, but all of your neighbor's sins, and is there to remind you of both over and over again until at last your heart kind of finally sees the fullness of it.